Hey everyone, so welcome back to my channel. My name is Ella and for today's video I thought we could be discussing broom closet witches and Wiccans. So I have received a couple of DMs and messages asking me what to do, how to practice Wicca and witchcraft if you are in the broom closet. You might be in the broom closet for different reasons, maybe it's your family or your friends or even the country that you live in. Um, whatever may be the case, we are going to be discussing three points today. The first part of this video is going to be discussing why or why not you might want to share your witchcraft or Wiccan beliefs. The second part is going to be all about how you can practice in secret. And the last part will be on coming out of the broom closet. So I will be leaving some timestamps here on the screen or in the description box. So if you are interested in only one part, then you can go click on that. And I also want to quickly mention, I do have a video on uh, tips for baby witches in case you are interested in that as well. In the description box, I will also be linking a couple of different links for you to check out such as free online books or shops that you might want to check out as well as community places. So for example, different groups on Reddit, hashtags on Instagram that you can be following for you to just kind of get into that entire community. So this of course is a very individual kind of thing, everyone has their own reasons for why they are in the broom closet, some people have families that might not agree with you or you believe that may they might not agree with your belief system or your practice, you might have friends that you are not sure of if they would be supporting your practice or you might even live in a culture, specific country um, or even just region that might not necessarily view Wicca and witchcraft as uh, acceptable or you know whatever it may be. You definitely have your own reasons for why you are in the broom closet and therefore you will always have a different type of reason for why you might want to stay in the broom closet versus why you might want to leave the broom closet. So why would you even want to come out of the broom closet? Some of the most obvious ones are for example freedom, um, coming out of a broom closet or any closet for that matter of course is very freeing. You're finally admitting, not necessarily admitting, but you're finally open with the world of who you truly are, what your beliefs are and yeah it can be very freeing. You might be living a double life if you are in the broom closet at the moment. You know a lot of t people have told me that they have a very Christian, for example, it's just an example, family and they are going to church but they don't even believe in the Christian principles anymore and they kind of feel a little bit bad about that too. So coming out of the broom closet can alleviate some of this double life um, feeling that some might have. Of course, being inside of the broom closet is emotional you know, it's draining, it can be very draining to some because you are hiding a part of yourself to the world and especially if you are hiding this from your family and friends, people that are mostly close to you, uh, it can be very emotionally draining and stressful. So coming out of the broom closet can really help you alleviate that emotional stress, have that mental stability that maybe you are missing. You will also most likely not have that fear of being found out anymore. A lot of people that are in the broom closet are in constant fear of being found out. So you might be practicing in secret and then you're always worried that your relative might be walking into your room right now, right? Or that you have forgotten something somewhere lying around the house and someone will be like, what's this? Or your friends might catch suspicion, right? So it's a constant fear that you might be living in. And of course, that's not really great. So therefore, that's one of the other reasons, this other reasons that you might be wanting to come out of the broom closet. A another point that I quickly want to mention of why you might want to come out of the broom closet or in particular why it's a good idea to come out of the broom closet is a global change and I think we are seeing that at this very moment. Before I was making this video I was actually researching it a little bit and I have seen a couple of people speak about this in that it's actually a good idea if you want to come out of the broom closet to do that right now because a lot of people are being kind of awakened to different people's belief systems and we are having that shift into a new age and people's mindsets are being changed, people are learning new things and you know with everything going on right now so moving into a more open-minded direction is definitely a good thing. Um, so that's another point for coming out of the broom closet. 
So next part is why you might not want to come out of the broom closet. So of course the most obvious one would be privacy. So a belief system like that, it is private to you, you know? You don't have to come out of the broom closet if you don't want to. And sometimes people don't want to come out of the broom closet because it is private. It is because, you know, they want to keep it to themselves. I, as a matter of fact, was very private with my practice for most of my life. And I kind of only started being really open and public about it. A couple of years ago, really, I've always kind of told my friends and my family always knew it, of course, because my family is witchcrafty themselves. But I didn't really you know, show it as much as now when I'm here on YouTube and on Instagram. So privacy is one part of why you might want to stay in the broom closet. A question that you definitely should ask yourself is why do you want to come out of the broom closet? Is it because you are doing it for yourself or are you being pushed to come out of the broom closet? Is it because you feel like you have to come out of the broom closet? Are you trying to send a certain message or is it really just for your own happiness and for your own stability. So if you do choose to keep your belief system private, then that might be more so because you don't really mind being found out or being open, but you simply are perhaps just more introverted and you might just prefer being more kept to yourself. And both options coming out or staying in the room closet are of course absolutely fine and it's absolutely up to you. So don't feel pressured by people surrounding you, communities um, that might be saying you should definitely come out of the room closet. Don't feel pressured to do that because if you are comfortable in the position in the position that you are currently in then of course you know it's it's your belief system it's your personal practice it's not that anyone should be forcing you to come out and of course as i already mentioned you might also not be coming out because of your country or your customs in that specific area that you live in which of course also is a valid reason if it's your safety that is on the line then i would also maybe suggest being a bit more careful with it so now we already are moving on to part two and that is living in secret so I get this message a lot actually on Instagram and on YouTube and that is hey I have really insert religion <laughs> parents or my parents are really scientific I've seen that one too and they do not believe in witchcraft or they think I'm worshipping the devil or you know that kind of idea is a lot of times in people's minds and heads so a lot of times people that come to me they will say i can't come out of the broom closet because my family um, or my friends won't be open towards it i will be talking about how you can come out of the broom closet if you wish to do so in the third part but in this part i will be talking more about how you can actually practice in secret so some of the ways that you can actually be practicing in secret are by doing things that are more creative. So of course you can get candles and incense and crystals and have them on for example your windowsill because these things are not necessarily related to witchcraft to the point where they're very obvious. However, if you don't want to have any of these items or you can't have any of these items, you definitely don't need them. In Wicca and witchcraft you definitely don't need tools they can help but they are not necessary what is necessary is your own mind and your own belief system that's really the only thing that you need to be practicing wicca and witchcraft so some of the things that you can be doing especially if you are more inclined towards wicca or the more pagan religions then nature is your best friend you know go out into nature no one's going to find it suspicious that you are sitting under a tree and journaling or that you are taking a walk at the lake those are things that you can be doing that are inconspicuous 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 and no one's going to be asking questions normally you can also be looking at different forms of witchcraft. So for example, if you are interested in kitchen witchcraft, those are some things that you can incorporate into your practice that again would probably not raise any questions. If you are baking a honey cake um, or maybe, you know, a maple cake or whatever cake it is and, you know, writing some sigils in the bottom of the pan, no one's going to be asking questions if you are doing it 
just out of you're just baking something right or using herbs and using teas and such things those are not necessarily alluding to witchcraft and the same goes for art magic so if you are interested in creative ways for example art painting music then that is another thing that you can be doing and incorporating those things into your practice and of course there also is the green path that might also be interesting to you so being secretly Wiccan or practicing witchcraft in secret is really all about using what you have and being creative with it. One of the cool things that I actually saw that I really thought was a great idea was having a working book of shadows. So what that means is that you will actually be getting a completely plain book, especially if you're in college, you can use a college book or, you know, in school, of course, you can use any kind of like school notebook that is empty and use that as your working book of shadows. So what you can do is draw your altar inside of your book of shadows and do everything on that drawn altar. So you don't have to have a real physical altar in your room or anywhere around you, in your dorm, wherever it may be, but instead you have it on your paste, uh, piece of paper. So that working book of shadows also means that you can then do all of your spell work inside of that book of shadows. So you might be looking more into sigil work, you might be looking more into visualizations and manifesting using affirmations and, you know, chanting poems and again art magic of course as well. On the topic of altar, I do have a video on how to make a traveling altar and that can kind of be a guideline for you to how to create an altar that you can hide away. I made that little altar in a box that is that big. You really don't need a lot. You can do it in a little tin box or you can do it in a bigger shoe carton or maybe if you have a drawer, you can have um, a drawer dedicated to your altar if you don't have Snoopy parents uh, or for siblings. So you can really get creative and really, you know, let it flow, let your own creativity flow, let your own magic flow into your belongings, into the things that you surround yourself with. Of course, what also needs to be said is that meditation and visualization and the entire more psychic realm is really important for Wicca and witchcraft. More so witchcraft, but it definitely also is very important in Wicca. So whilst all these things like tools and book of shadows and you know, all of these things might look really cool, in the end of the day it is a belief system, it is a practice. So what is most important is that you grow as a spiritual being and that you learn and that you study and once again i do have a couple of sources linked in the description box for online books that you can read if you are not able to purchase books online uh, or in the bookstore and of course you can also uh, a lot of times Libraries also have great books on Wicca, on witchcraft, on paganism, on herbalism, on, you know, culture in a more broad sense. All of these things really add to your own practice and they would most likely not ring any, um, raise any red flags. You know, if you're starting a rock collection or if you are using playing cards instead of tarot cards or if maybe you are now cooking or if you now are raising a couple of plants those are things that are very witchy but they're not necessarily to the point where it's like oh my god is she why is she drawing a pentacle on the floor you know <laughs> it doesn't always have to be that extreme i think a lot of people are so worried about practicing witchcraft and wicca in secret because they have this image in their head that it has to be this certain way you have to have a huge altar it has to take up this entire corner of your room and you have to dress in this really witchy aesthetic you, you get my point right you don't have to draw circles um of you know pentacles and stuff like that with salt on your floor you really don't have to do that you can simply sit under a tree and journal in your working book of shadows um, and meditate and learn how to visualize and learn how to cast spells that way connect to your deities if you believe in any kind of deities through music through art through food through drink through dance you know there are so many different ways that you can incorporate magic into your daily life without it having to be obvious you know, I, every time I make my coffee and I stir my coffee and I always put my intention in my coffee and the same goes for food, the same goes for showering. These are little things and it's because these little things are in your mind, they're mental, they're your belief system and belief system is mental. It's not physical, usually, <laughs> but it can help. But, you know, usually your belief system is in your mind. It's what you believe in. So really do get creative with that and try not to focus too much on the 
the surrounding things because for baby witches that are in the broom closet those can then really seem limiting even though it doesn't have to be at all and finally we're coming to part three and that is how to get out of the broom uh, how to leave the broom closet how to get out of the broom closet so tip number one of course is you don't need to tell everyone i still do not tell everyone i am very public i'm on instagram and i'm on youtube but on the street or in university even though i'm not done with university i didn't necessarily tell everyone the first time i met them you know i my close friends know and my family knows my boyfriend knows and that's really it for me but you don't have to tell the world if you don't want to you don't have to go on instagram now and make a huge announcement you can just keep it to yourself and to the people that are important to you so make baby steps, right? You don't have to make this huge big deal out of it um, because that's going to be intimidating for a lot of people, right? So my tip is really take little steps, tell maybe one person, tell your mother, tell your father, tell your guardian, tell your siblings if you have any, um, tell your closest friends if you want to, but you don't have to go ahead and tell the world, at least not at the start. You can if you feel more comfortable later on, of course, but for the start, it's good to just take baby steps. Number two, you will probably be met with some resistance at some point, and I really want to like tell you this now, don't let other people's judgment, their fear, their misunderstanding direct you or push you into, you know, being someone that you're not. You do deserve to be yourself. You do deserve to have your own practice, your own, your own belief system, and you shouldn't be believing in something that other people tell you to. You should be doing it for yourself. So you definitely will be met with resistance, in which case that's okay. That's going to be normal. That's going to be happening. And in that case, it's really important to be patient and to also be understanding that it's something new for them. It's like, oftentimes it's a shock, right? For your parents or for your guardian, for your friends, it, it can be a shock. So being careful and being kind is really, really important as well. That's tip number three. When you do let people know, be kind, be careful, don't jump on them and <laughs> let them know you know oh my god like i hate your religion i never believed it in it in the first place and i am now a witch because that's probably not gonna you know be that great instead if you're saying hey i'm interested in this thing it's kind of cool it's this like pagan thing or witchcraft you don't even have to necessarily call it witchcraft because a lot of people of course have bad associations with that but if you start slow and you say i'm kind of into like crystal healing i'm kind of looking into meditation i'm kind of looking into visualization and making these baby steps it helps you and it helps the people because it's not such a jump scare <laughs> for these people and for yourself um, eventually, of course, uh, it's great if you are able to say, yeah, I, I practice witchcraft or yeah, I, I'm a Wiccan, but it might not necessarily be possible right off the bat because it just takes baby steps. Now, number four is going to relate back to those friends and family and guardians, guardians that will probably have questions for you, right? They're going to be like, so isn't witchcraft like evil? Do you practice? You know, they're gonna have questions for you. You should definitely be prepared for these questions because if they come to you with these questions and you just stand there like, uh, I, I don't know, it's not going to alleviate their fears or their judgment. It's probably only going to make them worse. So if you have a couple of, you know, things, maybe you have them even written down. If you have the most common questions that you had yourself when you came into this practice, write them down, have a look what, what you believe are the most common questions that you will be receiving and already have an answer prepared and maybe even some resources in case they want to look into it a little bit more themselves because that's again going to really help them understand you better, understand your practice better and be more open-minded. Because if the first question they're gonna ask is, oh, you practice witchcraft, so do you believe in the devil? Okay, do you eat babies? Like these things and then you don't have an answer, it's not gonna help, right? You, you definitely should be making your own research and doing your own research before you then are able to let other people in on your secret and 
have them misunderstand you even more if you don't have these answers prepared. So make sure you have some answers prepared for questions. Now the last tip is it is important in my opinion to have some sort of support system or some type of community because unfortunately there will be people that might not understand you that might not be open-minded to you and it might feel alienating alienating to you so in that case it's really important to have a social system to have a community that is going to be there to support you and that you can talk to openly and to have friends essentially around you that you can confide in that you can relate to and yeah so you don't really feel as lonely and once again I have linked a couple of different places for you in the description box like reddit and facebook groups and stuff that you can join um, and of course of course this community as well on instagram and my instagram and here in the comment section and you are definitely always all welcome and yeah because having someone to talk to having that like stability you're not gonna feel as lonely you're not gonna feel as left outside it's going to be really helpful towards your growth and also helping you move into the direction of standing up for your beliefs because if everyone's just like pounding on on you and telling you your beliefs are this or that it's not going to help you but if you do have a support system that is there and that is to going to tell you you are loved and what you're doing is absolutely correct you are your own person don't let other people judge you and guide you it's going to be helpful <laughs> trust me it's good for your mental health to have these friends and to have that support system and finally the last tip is do be patient so once again that move takes time and your parents your your parents your guardians your siblings your friends they might not agree with you at first so therefore it's really important for you to have patience with them but also with yourself because if you show consistency if you you know if you're practicing wicca or witchcraft now and you're showing that this is this is what you are this is what you believe in then they're more likely to eventually open up to you and eventually accept your beliefs because they see okay you're taking it seriously you're not just having a face um you know this is something that is important to you and most of the times um your friends and family do love you and if they love you then they will of course accept you it might just take some time it might just take them a little bit to realize that this is important to you this is who you are as a person and this is what is important to you and then eventually after a lot of time and patience they will come to the conclusion that all right i guess it is what it is so just keep that in mind it might have um you know some resistance at first i definitely had some friends that also were like okay you know and eventually they just kind of were like i guess that's just ella you know and at this point everyone just accepts me for me because i have shown to them that that's just who i am you can't really separate me from that anymore because that's just completely like essential to me so if you show people that you are true about this if you are consistent if you're showing that this is really important and you know it's not just going to be a month thing for you it's going to get better and eventually people will take you for what you are so i believe that is already it for this video or already it might be like really long i'm sorry um and i hope that this was in any way helpful for you and of course if you do have any comments or questions leave them in the dis in the description box in the comments down below i try to get through all of them um if i can't then surely someone else will be able to also help you out and yeah, of course, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my uh, channel. That would mean a lot to me. Thank you so much. And yeah, see you next time and blessed be.